Welcome to PowerCat Live. I'm here with Mehdi from the PowerCat team as well. And Mehdi, tell us uh, how long have you been working on Power Platform and what do you do? Well, I've been working with the Power Platform for maybe four years now, uh, just before GA, before the product went GA. So it has been a while. So maybe it's time to move on. I don't know. <laughs> don't go Don't go anywhere <laughs> on behalf of everyone building apps. I love today. it here. No, it's great. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> so, so four years ago, though, like how many people were building apps like at the time you started? I think I was one of the early, early developers yeah, on, I think so. on the platform, and uh, it was a lot of fun because you had to create new ways of doing things. And I came from a dev background, and my initial reaction to the platform was uh, was was hard. Like, I mean, I didn't have all of my magic, you know, developer tools, uh, all yeah. of the advanced features of uh, normal or, or you know pro developer languages so but it was fun in the sense that you had to come up with new ways of doing things and and, and think a bit outside the box so i, I really liked that early days of power apps because you you had to be creative for sure and those pro devs tools is related to what you're going to show today but before we get there, tell us like what did you do before joining the joining Power Apps and getting involved? So in I, yeah, I, I did quite a bit of things before I, I joined Microsoft at the early age, uh, right after of uh, out of college. Uh, mm -hmm. I went into the game studios, Microsoft Game Studios. Uh, I had a passion for graphics, and I and I thought that games are, are the closest things to you know mixing art and graphics. So that was uh, where I landed. Uh, I then moved on to a small uh, team within MSN, which was really about uh, branded entertainment experiences where you create very super advanced website to wall uh, users. And the idea was to keep them engaged uh, into an experience that had a rich content uh, and we did a bit of promotion or brand awareness, I guess. Uh, and it was really fun as well because you, I, I dealt with a lot of designers, uh, content writers. So it was a lot of, uh, there's an artistic component to the, to the work, but also high, uh, you know, high end website that were super optimized, uh, uh, you know, and uh, ahead of their, of their time, I would say. And you've and you you're known within Microsoft within the community for building some of the best looking Canvas apps that we've seen. So <laughs> you've definitely brought that. But because of that, you also do a lot of code reviews and helping people build better looking and better performing apps. And so tell us what you've got today to show. Yeah. So today, so uh, yeah, over the years, I, I was like involved in a lot of uh, you know projects that were going not the right direction, I, I guess. And uh, so I was, I, I would jump, you know, in into the situation trying to see how we can optimize an app, make it more performant. Uh, and you know, there is a lot of ideas and and I think that I borrow from my ba web background uh, anyway. Uh, but uh, the goal was always to kind of try to 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 help customers uh, better optimize their app and and also better write their apps for maintainability and uh, extensibility and all that stuff. So a lot of those ideas were on my in my brain mostly, uh, uh, and all were a little bit everywhere in the documentation. Uh, so what I'm showing today is a tool that kind of puts uh, everything in one place that allow you to properly do a code review on an app. Uh, and when I talk about code review, there's like, you know, uh, looking at the performance, uh, looking at uh, formulas, like looking at uh, how the app in the long term is gonna be maintainable. Uh, all of those aspects that might be important, security, accessibility, you know, coding standards, UX, all of the aspects uh, the important aspect of an app that you want to uh, make sure that they are uh, they hit the bar in terms of quality. So this tool puts all of that as a checklist first. Uh, this checklist, you know, either for the most part is automated. So we we analyze the app uh, through static code analysis, through looking at the code itself, looking at telemetry, uh, and then we can actually from there pass or fail most of this checklist. Uh, but for a category of items in this checklist. Uh, we have a, a live conversation with the customers and send the intentions. 
uh, you know, what they were they trying to, you know, how much data they were trying to load, what's the strategy long term. Mm -hmm. And given that discussion, uh, you know, we can give recommendation. But the tool itself is just really a focused way for the you know, PowerCat team members to to go and do code reviews. So, so yeah. show like something you might find, like, you know, how would you use this or what would this discover that might be really tough to find out in the other yeah. way? Yeah. So the studio doesn't really give you an advanced search capability. Mm -hmm. And as an example here, if you look at one of the patterns we check for is, uh, is this check for n plus one calls. This is in the case someone went and built an app, uh, they had a gallery in this app, and every item in that gallery is doing a network call, an API lookup, for example, a filter operation within that gallery item. We don't we want to avoid that uh, because it has a performance implication. So the tool here uh, has a few sections, and I'm going to show one of the sections that, uh, that I use extensively, which is the code viewer section. So this code viewer section, I'm going to go to it, it really shows me every single screen, every single control, every single property, what are the formulas that were written there. Uh, and I can start looking, like, for example, I want to look at all of the filter operations. Uh, and I, I can just search for that, and it will show me everywhere someone did a filter operation. And I'm interested to see, in our particular case, we're looking for a pattern where we're doing this N plus one call, which is you know, calling an API or doing a lookup within a gallery. And then for that, for me, I can just simply, for example, do a lookup here and see whether for some reason there is a place here where perhaps here I have a lookup in this screen, activity screen, in a control called Title2, which uh, lives within a gallery. And here I'm doing a lookup uh, using uh, an external database. So every item in my active in this gallery Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be actually calling an API or calling the database and making a call. So that's something that we are we don't recommend. So that's an example where quickly through the tool, I can uh, I can go and find some bad patterns. What are some of the other uh, things you can do with this? I see you've got some other menu items we haven't looked at. Yeah, so that's the code review. It's super useful to traverse quickly your code, look at all the bad patterns that might exist. The other thing that I look at is just something that we all have already in, in Studio, which is the app uh, checker results. So if you are using Studio, you know that within here, uh, and then just to show a, an actual app that I'm reviewing here, you can see here that app checker will give me all of the uh, issues that the app has. So in my case, I just want to streamline uh, that process. So I have that same results showing up here. I can do more interesting things to it. I can link uh, a particular app result to, to a pattern. I can do a bunch of things that are a bit more useful than just that experience in the studio. Uh, but really, just a, a quick way to kind of go and see uh, some of the really common issues that uh, a lot of apps have, like inefficient delay loading is an example. Uh, and maybe we could do another session where we can go a little bit deeper on on, uh, on each one of those items here. Uh, but that's one example. We have another section here, which is about telemetry. It shows us like slow queries. It shows us uh, the screen navigation, the number of controls per screen. Uh, it shows us whether some flags were turned on or off because those are also explicit column selection is huge in terms of performance implication. Size of uh, some of the assets that you have embedded with your app. So that's an important thing that to, we want to compress that. Uh, network traces as well. So network traces is, is, uh, is really what we get out of the monitor uh, tool that you have within Studio, which is, uh, which is here. Mm -hmm. So that also is very helpful to, to link in formulas with the actual request that gets fired off. So we could look at particular requests and understand why they were taking a significant amount of time. Uh, and then from there, we can, we can recommend certain strategies to optimize. Now, for things like the telemetry, the performance data, and the network trace, how does that get into the tool? We do have, so except for the slow, which I'll, I'll get back to the slow queries, this is something we are getting because we do have access as as Microsoft to, to that data. Uh, it turned out that in fact, most of this data, a version of it is, is available through the monitor tool, the network trace that we get from a user is actually very helpful as well. It's not the same aggregated result that you get from telemetry, uh, but it does give you a, a good indication of where the potential problematic queries are. So the network trace is really just a, a run of the monitor and mm -hmm. a download of that. Everything here is really about us looking at the app itself, looking at every screen, looking at a number of controls per screen. 
This is also information that is embedded in the in, settings in, in the yeah. app itself. It's the same thing with the media file. So, but for the most part, this this section uh, will will still be useful for uh, for many reasons. So, so so what this really allows you to do is do what a maker could do, but might have to look in many different places. This allows you to kind of get an overall view of the app and its performance. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then and this is just all about being efficient, looking at everything in one place. We are you know conducting many many reviews nowadays, where we see the most challenges right now in terms of performance and and the way apps are written uh, is really within the canvas world. So uh, so that's what the tool is about. Everything you're showing is just a canvas app. What would it take for someone else to build this? Yeah, actually, uh, anyone could have built this. Uh, I'm actually just using the newly released uh, Power Apps tools library here. So that's what I was announcement about a month ago, showcasing uh, this new open source library that opened up a little bit, a lot of well, it opens up a lot of uh, of possibilities. But basically, what you can do with this library, uh, which is called the Power Apps Language Tooling Library, is go and extract an app. Uh, you could look at the objects that are within, the, you know, all of the compose or components of an MS app file, which is a Canvas app, and you can go and, and traverse all of the screens, all of the comp controls, all of the data sources. And basically, what I'm doing all over here, like especially in the code viewer section. Is um, I'm actually going through every single uh, control uh, within every screen and then just getting the formula uh, that corresponds to that property. So anyone could build that. As of today, we are releasing this for people as a reference app. You could extend it. You could go and, and, uh, and make it work for your organization. Uh, in fact, the tool itself will allow you to add more items for your checklist. Uh, you could customize this. So all of that is available. Some of all the features that you will see in this app is the ability to send reports uh, that gives you a kind of a full uh, uh, description of all of the issues that you might have with your app. So you can send that to the to the app maker. You could look at uh, individual items uh, here and where in code there was an issue. You could look at resources where you can learn, go and learn uh, how to kind of do better uh, for that particular pattern. So that's, that's great news. So I don't have to build this. It's available today. I can download it, start using it, and add on to it. Thanks for the time, Mehdi. And thanks for all the work you put into this, too. This is I've Honestly, seen you use this. This is a great resource. Cool. Thank you. <laughs>